this is part two of the Tostrax series. Today I will be recapping and also doing an AY sound chip mod to make its level adjustable. If you didn't watch part one yet, I highly recommend you watching that and you'll find the link in the description below. So, let's begin. Okay, so let's take out one of these glass circuits here. Let's put my batch together. Okay, so let's start on this side here, this capacitor here, and work our way across the board. And we remove this. Now one thing to note about this is to be very careful because this board is very delicate. Sinclair were about cost cutting, uh, you know, literally giving the consumer you know, access to computers. Now these are soldered on both sides, on the top and the bottom. So I'm going to be very careful with this. And just like the bottom part is unlocked, so just the top part, I'm going to release it to the solder line like this. And you know, just the excess solder here. Four point, oops, 4.7 off <laughs> microfarad and 50 volts. Now let's search for that in this. And we take our time, there's no rush. We're only gonna do this once. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this twice. <laughs> it's 4.750. Oh, fantastic. Picked up the perfect one. 4.7. Yeah, it's positive here. It's a bit annoying that axial capacitors are preferred here, but the kit comes with the radial capacitors only. So I'll bend the negative like over on the radial just to make a makeshift axial. Actually, you know what? Let's solder this switching regulator in now. Okay, let's remove these three. So the output on this side, well, it's going to be facing the writing part, the nice pretty red part is going to be facing outward. So let's cast the solder. So I'll put this in and solder this in here. And this is why I get chipped nail polish because I do this kind of stuff. But that's okay. I cannot remain perfect. <laughs> Things have got to be done. Okay, so a bit of an update. I have replaced these three capacitors and already realizing you know, how fragile this board is. Give me a Commodore 64 or Amiga to recap any day compared to this because this is so delicate that you can just ruin the PCB with a, a little too much heat. And uh, I mean, these are fine. I've managed to, you know, recap this, 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 and put this regulator in here. And there's one here. So yeah, to be honest, I'm not a big fan of recapping, but I know it has to be done. And also I have switched from a chisel tip to a point. You know, normally people say don't use points uh, for some reason, I just find it way easier to use points, point tips. Uh, it just feels more precision. I feel more precision with it. So, uh, especially with this. This time. Turn around and do this. It may actually be better not using the desoldering pump at all. Just heating the soldier here and pulling it through like that if you notice because it's less damage to the board the pump is a bit clumsy I mean it's okay for boards like the Commodore 64 or the Amiga and other things but these Sinclair spectrum boards are so delicate there you go it's actually easy that I just do not want to use too much on it. Which one the world value is this? 22 microfarad, 22 oof. <laughs> Where is 22 oof? One thing I've learned here is to not use the desolder pump on this thing. Firstly, I need a smaller nozzle, which I've ordered, 
But what is concerning is that the board got singed on the part I used the pump. Yeah, this is a pretty delicate board. So I'm gonna turn the pump off and just desolder it by hand. I think a desoldering braid is probably better to use on the more awkward components. Definitely not those hand pumps as they are clumsy and the shock from them isn't good for the pads. We don't want to be lifting pads here now. Make sure you separate the ones you've already done. Be careful here because these two do not actually join. You're not supposed to. So, That's enough. Solder. No sick. Now let's move down the board. Next one is here. Lovely. <laughs> Thing is, it's better to solder a little bit. So just to add fresh solder to it. Old solder is not easy to melt. So once you add and mix fr fresh solder into it, then it's much easier. It's so one side, and that's the positive. This one, just melt that while gently pulling. There we go. And that's out. Now which one is this? This is... Oh, 50 volt 1 off. Okay. So there was 1 off somewhere. It's 100 off. It was one of these black ones, I know. 1 off, 50 volts. Fantastic. So, let's add some new solder here. Okay, elevate the board. Okay, we check the other side, sort that out, which is already soldered in, to be honest. But let's trim it first, heat it up, and check it that it's on the pad. Make sure there's no risk of dry joints. It's fine. There you go. There you go. I'm just being very delicate, taking my time very delicate with this. You could tell in places like here it is a very fragile board. Like, you know, this is just... There's a lot of cost cutting going on here, I could tell. <laughs> okay, so that's in. Just like bend it down this way, that's fine. Check on the other side here. It's actually already soldered, just... Yeah. Just heat it up, make sure there's no dry joints, no, no risk of dry joints. Put your solder and trim. That was, this method is way quicker. Now I've only got one, two, there's four left now. That was way quicker than I thought. I thought I was going to be there for ages when I was using the pump. I really do not need the pump for this. You know, it's actually not bad. I don't even need a braid. I'm not using a pump nor a braid, I'm just using my own technique here. Running out of space on my card, three minutes left. Let's see if I can do this capacitor in three minutes, or at least remove it in three minutes. Uh, adding first solder, solder first. Okay. Tweezers. I'm gonna just add fresh, fresh, fresh shoulder <laughs> to this. Then just. Gently pull up, heat that up. There we go. All right, that's easy. Did it in a minute. <laughs> I'm conscious of the target. 22 off, and yeah, it's one of these. The last one on here, 22 off. Yep. Okay, come on. Let's see if I can make this. 30 seconds left. <laughs> and we're done. Okay, that was... Yeah, three minutes, I guess. <laughs> well, three minutes, 30, call it. Now the spectrum I'm working on is starting to communicate with me. It's got the right idea. I need some. <laughs> okay, so in my retro corner, I'm going to test this newly recut uh, spectrum. Just to see if all is good before we go in, let's just try Tetris on cassette. It's 
So we're using Senor Big Dude here and if you wish to see his restoration the link is in the description below or in the letter I in the top corner. So let's put Tetris in here and it's rewinding. Okay, brilliant. Now I just power this up. Now the good sign is that it powers up. Now let's load something. Let's play on here. Fantastic, good sign. Nice. Fantastic, it loaded well. Now you'll have noticed something which um, annoyed me the moment, uh, you know, the moment I got this and the moment I used it. And that is that this that finished. <laughs> Sorry. What I find annoying is that the sound from the ULA chip, uh, the CPU sounds, it's actually louder than the AY sound and it's just annoying. So I'm thinking of um, doing something about this. Now that this is working and working quite well, let's see what we can do about that AY sound which is too quiet. So let's go back to the workbench. I don't know the keys. Okay, so in search for the uh, schematics for the DOS rack, I came across Zoom's specky corner here, and um, it seems to be split into two parts, the digital part and the analog part. I'm naturally drawn towards the analog part. I searched for the mic and the ear ports, which were nowhere to be seen, even though I could see this. Uh, initially, I thought this you know, R132 was you know, the resistor I'm looking for. Um, that comes from the AI sound and that comes from the ULA chip, even on the join here, but they go into some sort of audio input, some sort of... Yeah, there seems to be some sort of hybrid IC here. Um, anyway, I, what I'm searching for wasn't here, so I decided to, you know, tackle this from the AI chip itself. So. I went to the digital side of this, uh, digital side of things. The AY chip is here, and I needed to look at the pinout of this. So I looked up the pinout here. It seems to be, uh, there seems to be analog outputs here, A, B, and C, which is the three um, channels, well, I call them channels, some people call them voices of the sound chip. But yeah, so this seems to be those. Let's go back to here. So this A, B, C here, coming out of here, going through what, look like, what looks like to be a single stage amplifier. So that's the input going into the base. This is biasing resistor. This goes, ah, okay. So this is the output. Okay, so it's a single stage amplifier. This goes up into here. goes up here and then goes into okay this is the unlock sound unlock circuit diagram which is this strange anyway uh, it goes into there but also taps up to here now this is a little confusing I think on the older spectrums the make an ear a different meaning in the sense of the microphone was just like okay this is an in, you know, the microphone was assumed to be the input and the ear was assumed to be the output. However, the microphone here seems to be the output. And it seems to work as the output. In other words, it's just telling you connect this to the mic of your tape recorder. Therefore being the output. And this ear... is It's confusing, it should be... I know. It's the input. Basically saying connect this to the ear of the tape recorder, which is the output. So. Then this cipher it goes into here. It's weird. <laughs> anyway, uh, this is the OLED chip. The CPU sounds come from here, or the loading sounds and so forth, and the in-game sound effects. 
this is the output of the of that. So it goes through this uh, capacitor here and then this resistor. No, this is from the Y A Y, sorry. Let's look at this and make this a variable resistor. Because if you reduce the resistance of this, it will let more through, more current through, and just make it louder. Make the AY only louder, not the CPU uh, sounds. So let's try that. Okay, so having a look around, I managed to locate R115, which is right next to the OLA chip here. So let's uproot that and see and replace it with a variable resistor and see what difference it makes. The one right next to it seems to be the capacitor. Very strange location, it's like all the way down there. Actually, let me just test with a meter. Okay, so let's test this. The mic. Wow, it is. Now let's test this and hopefully it will work. Hopefully I can adjust the, um, the level of the AY chip. Okay, so let's uh, try loading this again and test it with the potentiometer in there. Okay, so now let's see the difference the potentiometer makes. I'm not going to touch the volume control or anything, only the potentiometer. Okay, so let's open this. Okay, that's, it doesn't make a difference. Fantastic. That was really annoying me. I'm a bit of a perfectionist. <laughs> so I'll make things happen like this. <laughs> Even if it freaking takes me the entire day. Do stay tuned for part 3 where I start on the second toast rack and wrap up this restoration with some nice demonstrations of what the spectrum can do. Please do hit that like button if you enjoyed the video, subscribe and hit that bell icon to be notified of updates and also feel free to share my videos with your friends. Many thanks to my patrons for their support, it means a lot. If you wish to support me on Patreon, the link is in the description along with links to my patrons websites or YouTube channels. For now I will say adios!